The early days of MMA saw several promotions experimenting with its embryonic rule set, and one of the most successful came in the New York Upstart with just four events to its name. Today, we look at one of the most important promotions in MMA history, one whose technical and legal innovations can still be seen to this day. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Battlecade Extreme Fighting. Battlecade was founded by film producer Donald Zuckerman, who was approached by cinematographer Richard Crudo about developing a combat sports league based around Brazil's Vale Tudo scene. The project came just a few months after production began on UFC 1, although Crudo insists the two projects were unaware of each other. Zuckerman used his Hollywood connections to establish a super team for his venture. Bob Guccione, founder of Penthouse Magazine, agreed to invest a million dollars into the project, while New York businessman Rick Bloom served as the company's CEO. To help on the sporting side, Zuckerman hired John Peretti, a former kickboxer and student of legendary judoka Gene LaBelle. Peretti would serve as the matchmaker and recruiter for Battlecade, and is cited as the man behind many of the innovations the promotion became known for in its tenure. From the start, Battlecade were open about their ambitions. The company originally planned to hold their first event in New York, even going as far as to rent the fabled Madison Square Garden, only to relocate the show to North Carolina after opposition from state senators. Interestingly, the opposing party also included Bob Myrowitz, president of a then upstart promotion called the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Battlecade held its first event on November 18, 1995, where the company's attempts at innovation were seen immediately. While mixed martial arts had been used to describe the sport since its early days, Battlecade became the first promotion to actively embrace the term, a more socially acceptable coinage at a time when the UFC were still pushing the sport as no holds barred. Further innovations came in the fights themselves, as Battlecade became the first promotion to split their fights based on weight classes. 160 pounds for lightweights, 200 pounds for middleweights, and heavyweight was 200 and plus pounds. The company, however, weren't afraid to borrow from the UFC playbook, namely a reliance on the Gracie family to fill its nine-fight card. Half Gracie took just 40 seconds to win his pro debut, while Gracie student Conan Silveira would claim the show's heavyweight tournament. Other standouts included jiu-jitsu star John Lewis and Igor Zinoviev, the Russian winning the inaugural middleweight crown with a doctor stoppage over Mario Sperry. Even 80s icon Mr. T, I pity the fool, was drafted in as a cage-side reporter, several years before Joe Rogan would fill a similar role with the UFC. While Battlecade 1 was a critical success, it wasn't replicated commercially, as the last-minute location change led to the show being a net loss for the promotion. Zuckerman looked to avoid a similar scandal by bypassing the American legal system altogether, booking the company's second show at an Indian reservation in Montreal. Gracie, Silveira, and Zinoviev all returned for the sophomore outing, while newcomers included 18-year-old grappling ace Carlos Newton. Newton lied about his age and weight to secure a match with 260-pound Jean Riviere. Despite a spirited performance, the size difference proved too much for Newton, who was finished by the former kickboxer seven minutes into the bout. Battlecade bent the rules to get the second event in the can, but their lawlessness soon came back to haunt them. Hours after the event, Quebec police raided Battlecade's hotel and arrested several of its fighters, as well as matchmaker Peretti. While Guccione bailed out the offending parties, it proved another financial blow to the upstart promotion. While Battlecade failed to win fans in the legal field, it definitely won over followers of the sport. Meanwhile, the UFC prioritized freak show matchmaking and one-style specialists, Battlecade actively sought fighters with well-rounded skill sets, believing doing so would lead to more competitive and higher quality bouts. The company also continued to innovate during this time. The Canada show became the first to mandate the use of fingerless gloves, while its third outing would be the first to use three five-minute rounds, a template still used by MMA promotions to this very day. The Tulsa card saw Battlecade continue its rep for unearthing top talent, particularly in two debuting fighters who went on to become acclaimed coaches. Future CSW trainer Eric Paulson succumbed to 27-year-old Matt Hume, the man behind future UFC Hall of Famer Demetrius Johnson. Hume and Paulson, however, paled in comparison to former kickboxer Maurice Smith, who took on heavyweight champion Conan Silveira in the show's main event. Silveira entered the fight as a substantial favorite, and justified the hype by taking Smith down only for the Pancrase veteran to reverse position and neutralize Silveira on the ground. 
With his opponent's offense blunted, Smith teed off on Silveira while avoiding every attempt to take the fight to the mat, before making MMA history in the early stages of the third. The fight marked the first loss for a Gracie-trained fighter in a major promotion as well as proving fighters with striking backgrounds could find success at the sport's top level. While Smith announced his intention to defend his belt at Battle Cade 4, several of his peers weren't so fortunate. By late 1996, Battle Cade found itself in the midst of financial problems. The fallout from the Canadian and New York events limited the company's pay-per-view distribution, with Battle Cade 3 reportedly being available to just 45,000 households. The UFC were quick to circle the sinking ship, with several Battlecade fighters, including former champion Silveira, joining the promotion in the coming months. Worse was to come the following year, when key financier Guccione announced he was withdrawing funding from Battlecade, citing a downturn in business for parent company Penthouse. While company bosses had the funding to run Battlecade 4, its future beyond that was severely jeopardized leading the company's remaining alum to take desperate measures to raise awareness for the show. When you feel any discomfort, tap him. Tap, okay, okay. All right. Here's, here's what I don't understand. I have just said to you, when you feel any discomfort, tap him. So you feel discomfort, so what do you do? You just stand and go, okay. The final Battlecade card came to encapsulate the promotion a high-level but seldom-watched show with a mix of future stars and intriguing prospects. Olympic medalists Kevin Jackson and Kenny Munday made their pro debuts while Matt Hume claimed a stoppage win over future legend Pat Militich. Maurice Smith successfully defended his title in the main event, but by then the writing was on the wall. Battlecade closed its doors a few days later, having held just four events in its 16-month existence. Battlecade's legacy, however, would be felt in the years after. Several of the innovations trialed by the promotion would form the basis of the unified rules of MMA, the standard rule set used by nearly all MMA promotions around the world. The company's alum would also earn their kudos. Carlos Newton, Pat Militich, and Maurice Smith would go on to win titles in the UFC, while Peretti was hired as the company's matchmaker, a role he'd hold until being released by the UFC's new owners, Zufa. The most interesting story, however, belonged to Zinoviev. The Russian saw his career ended at the hands of Frank Shamrock before finding work as a Hollywood stuntman and later serving as the bodyguard for controversial financier Jeffrey Epstein. Battlecade was always going to have a short shelf life. The company lacked financial muscle and production values compared to even the early UFC, as well as being formed when public attitude toward the sport started to turn negative. But it's a testimony to its influence that it is still revered despite its comparatively short run. From regional shows to the UFC, Battlecade helped form the basis of the sport we know and love today. I mean, who knows how things would have turned out if we took our inspiration from Russia instead. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, post your feedback in the comments, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.